So here's an overview of the entire flow. So I've set it to start with a manual trigger, but you could use it, um, use different trigger if you wish, something automatic. Um, now the next, um, probably the most important um, action is the HTTP uh, connection. So I'm using a get method and um, I'm using a, a URL that connects to the graph API. And um, in, in this uh, demo, I'm querying uh, the members in a team group. And um, you can see here the ID for the actual group. Um, we have uh, querying for the members, and then we've, we're using the select function to return specific fields from that uh, data. Now it returns as, as a JSON. Um, so within the advanced options, this is where we have to add um, quite a lot of information and we have to set up um, the uh, application in Azure also. Um, and this I will show later, but you can see we have to have a tenant ID the audience is graph.microsoft.com. We need to have the client ID and the secret, and both of those are obtained from Azure. So going through the rest of the flow, we've got a response action straight after the HTTP, which is uh, running when there is a 200 response, it takes the body of the HTTP, that's a success response. Then there's a compose action, which uh, does some string uh, replacement. It's replacing uh, the presence of null within the HTTP response with double quotes. This I find um, is useful when the schema uh, returns a null. Um, the schema uh, is created using uh, or trying to find objects rather than strings or strings rather than objects and th this can cause an error so removing nulls um, allows the data type to be string but this is will be clear later so in the parse json we've got the the schema and we can see here we've got object and string types and for um result that returns null, um, it's not a string, and so the schema fails. But doing the previous compose uh, removes the presence of nulls, and the schema will work. So next we have a loop, which goes through every row returned within the JSON. And uh, we have a compose here, which builds up the uh, a JSON array for each row and then we have uh, each field that's been queried. So we have, if you notice, we've got four fields here and in the HTTP connector, we have four fields also. We've got the display name, given name, job title as well, and the surname. The preferred language has been added as well, but um, the array is uh, only asking for the four. So you can limit this, of course, by having less uh, fields than is actually uh, contained within the response. So in this, this is a, I suppose, a form of filter as well, because we're only um, returning four out of the five fields. So if we hover over the uh, one of the fields, we can see that it's, the formula itself is items apply to each, and then the name of the field within the, um, the JSON itself. So we can see there as well. So that uh, creates compose. And then in the second compose, we are taking the output of the compose three. Now this is required because when we then go to uh, the, the next step, which is create blob, we're actually gonna use that compose two as the content. I'll show how to create this blob uh, action step later on in the video as well. And then just as a, as a notification, as a, as a check, I post a message here um, of the array that uh, was created at the adjacent array. And you can see that's here. 
So in order to get Graph API connected to Power Automate, you have to register an app. So I've done that here uh, by clicking the new registration button in Azure. And here it is here, and you can see it's current. So within it, the, there's two pieces of information you need. There's the uh, application client ID here, and also the secret. So in here, I've created the secret and its value is obtained from here. Those two pieces of information are pasted into the HTTP connector in Power Automate. So in order to connect the Graph API to my domain, um, I have to register uh, an application, which I've done, but I've also got to set permissions connecting to Graph API itself. You can see I've done that here in Azure. Uh, I've given uh, four permissions or consented to four different levels of uh, application. Uh, there's one uh, delegation, one there as well, and that's been consented with also. So here we have the HTTP connector, and we have selected some fields within the URL using the select function. Um, we need to run this flow in order to get the response from this action. And we're going to use that uh, response in the subsequent uh, parse JSON connector in order to create a sample payload. So I'll show you here what I mean. So we're running the flow. And we're getting an error because the parse JSON, of course, um, is it correct? So we go to the HTTP connector and we copy the body result. This has the correct structure um, of the response. So we then go to the parse JSON action and then we generate from sample and we paste in that body result. That creates the structure of the JSON. And now the flow is ready to run. After updating the JSON and the HTTP select functions, we need to subsequently update the compose array here. Because we're querying four field names, we need to add those items in this Compose array. So we're going to run the flow as is after making all the amendments. And we can see the flow ran successfully. As a check, I've output the array, the result of the array, into a Teams chat. And we can see here we've got our JSON array with the various field names uh, included. So I've created a resource group here. And now I'm going to create a storage account within that resource group. And the storage account is going to be used to store the JSON data from the flow. The storage account itself is going to contain a container and it, that container will actually contain the blobs that get stored within it. So next we need to create the container within the blob storage. So 
So that's the container created. So back in the flow, we're going to create an action for creating a blob. That's going to transfer the JSON data into the blob. So when we create the action in Power Automate, we've also got to create the connection to the Azure blob also. You are asked to sign in at this stage. In my tenant, I have a previous Azure Blob connection, which I've got to remove first. So back in the flow, So in the context menu of the action, I need to select the connection I've just created. I now need to enter the storage account name and storage account key. So now I give the blob a name and I insert the content from the previous action, the compose action. So if we now run this flow, we will create the blob itself and then we'll be able to connect to it using Power BI. And so the blob has been created. So in Power BI, we're going to create a connection to the Azure blob. Here I enter the account name. And I enter the storage account key. And now I import the data into Power BI and create the report.
I create a measure here to count the number of members in the group. And the report is finished.